Bruce. So, Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to the traditional New Year, New Year webinar organised by Oxygen. This time, when I was actually writing the uh, specification for this webinar, I did a question mark. Really? Because every year we all do the same. This is the year I'm going to lose weight. That's always the top one. That's uh, always the, the top New Year resolution. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to stop smoking. And each year there seems to be more and more pressure. Let's go sugar. Dry January. In Veganuary or something like that, why don't we all go vegan for the whole month? Lots of uh, pressure to improve ourselves. Yet for every person who does stick to their resolutions and achieve their goals, there are so many who give up and just go back to their old habits. Every January, gyms and exercise classes are crowded, but by February, you won't be queuing up for the uh, treadmill anymore. The crowd disappeared. In last Friday, the 12th of January, it was named in the media as the day when most people give up on their, their New Year resolutions. They've tried and they've set unrealistic expectations. They were disillusioned. We don't get any better. We can't see instant results. So we give up. So with Sally to focus on what. what Focus on this webinar, I asked him to look at what is realistic and sustainable, the lifestyle changes any of us can make, particularly as far as exercise is concerned, which will really make a difference. I continue throughout 2018 and beyond. An experienced fitness trainer here in Leatherhead, who has been recommended to me by local members, who have really felt the benefit of his own advice, include one member who has and he helped her a huge amount with her rehabilitation. He had a successful career in financial services prior to setting up his own business, so he understands the corporate world and the pressures we work under, which often mean that exercise is the first thing to fall off the agenda. So, over to Anne. Okay, all right, Anne. Um, hello and good morning to everyone. Uh, I hope you're keeping well. Um, so yeah, this webinar that I'm going to present to you today, uh, New Year, New You, as you can see on the slide, um, the common theme that we're going to be focusing on is goal setting. Now, this is something, um, I think from my experience, that a lot of people come in with um, you know, great expectations. They, um, you know, they say, this is, this is my goal, this is what I want to do. But the reality is, only a few people actually carry through with them. So what I'm going to be addressing to you today, through this slide, is how to stay consistent and how to follow through with what you've set. Um, so, if we look onto the next slide and look onto what we're going to be covering today, as you can see uh, we have nine different uh, slides. <clears throat> so, I'll just briefly talk you through each slide <clears throat> and we'll get through to each um, one by one. So, we're going to start off by looking at the typical key issues that we experience. So, typically, there's so many constraints that we face, but what I'm going to highlight is um, are three of the main issues that I've seen in my experience that hold people back and look, look to see how we can actually overcome them and possible solutions. We will then swiftly move on to um, perceptions and outlook. Um, so we'll look at what is a realistic outlook, what is an unrealistic realistic outlook. Um, and that basically means um, two people, uh, one person who is realistic, is true to themselves, and one person who want to do um, something, but to be honest, their perception, their um, aims are not realistic for that moment in time. And we'll come on to the solution, so how we can marry them both up together and come to common terms. We'll then look into nutrition. So again, um, you know, this is not a nutritional lecture, but I'm going to give you the best nutritional advice uh, based on the environment that you typically are in and what, what you can do to set yourself on the right foot. We'll look at a very important factor, uh, which I'm sure which I'm sure most of you can uh, relate to, stress and mindset. Again, this is something which um, obviously is a pinnacle and is a foundation for a lot of things, not just health and fitness. We'll then have social media, uh, which is basically, you know, we're looking at what makes it so good and things which are you know, not exactly helpful. Again, I'm not here to bring down social media, but just to share my um, opinions. We'll then look at some typical work ideas that you can do. Um, some of this may be reinforcement, and some of this could be new ideas. 
then my top five tips, and then your question and answers. Okay, so maybe the first slide. So here we have key issues that we experience. So you see uh, three different uh, factors, time, commitments, and motivation. So let me go through each one of these one by one very briefly. Now, in the top one time, I'm sure you, in fact, not all of you can agree with the fact that time, especially in, in the environment that you're in, is a key factor that holds you back from following through with your uh, goals. Um, you, know, you may have work deadlines, projects, you may have to travel from site to site, you may need to travel abroad. Off more, more often than not, that gets in the way and that can be, uh, you know, it could be like an obstacle uh, which typically we want to avoid. Secondly, when we look at things like commitments, um, you know, I'm sure some of you or most of you have families and commitments around them. Which again, you know, if you have a goal in your mind, or if you say to us, if you have set out a goal saying that I want to work out two or three times a week, you know, you may do for the first couple of weeks, but then these commitments catch up. You may be someone who goes to regular events. You may host events. You know, there could be many factors. Um, so these two things as standalone are in my experience uh, from my observation, from talking to people, just observing these two factors, you know, as I understand it, are the, are the ones that actually do prevent people amongst many other factors. Now, the last one on motivation. Now, this is, again, a very key issue uh, because obviously if your time is against you and your commitments are there and you step back and slowly, slowly what happens? You start de demotivated. You know, it just slowly, you just slowly start slipping back because of inconsistency, as you can see, and a lack of routine. Now, with lack of routine, I just want to highlight something very quickly. When I talk about lack of routine, what I mean to me, what, what I mean by this is that um, a lot of people that I've seen um, in my experience, in my time training people, you know, they they, they have they come out with very very good um, programs themselves. Uh, be that from talking to friends, be that from social media, or just using the instincts. But then the place where they get stuck is once their body gets accustomed to that workout, and then they, then, then they, so they don't know where to go from there. And that is typically, even though it's a good starting point, it's somewhere where they plateau, and from there it's like, okay, where do I go from here? And that's where current and um, experience comes in, which we will talk about as we go through this slide. Okay, so moving on to the next slide, um, we're going to now look at, as I said, the perception of people. So we will first look at the unrealistic outlooks. Now, over here, I have summed up among many quotations um, the three top quotations that I've heard, which spell out unreal outlook. But it's not a good foot to start on. So let's look at these one by one. So the first quote, first person. Um, says, exercise is boring. I find it hard to motivate myself. Now, if you notice in this slide, the red letter words are the keywords I want you to focus on. So, in the first one, the word motivate comes up again. So, the things we need to look at over here are boring and motivation. And what we need to do is to change that word boring into exciting or good. And we need to change that word motivation to I don't find it hard to motivate myself. So, this is Something. This is typically somebody who comes excited, or maybe not, and then they realise, hang on a second, this is this is not working for me. Um, it's it's boring. I can't deal with it. Just to motivate myself. Um, second second um, quote. So this is more to nutritional base, and let me explain briefly about this as, as briefly about this as well. So I see it says I tried reduce, reducing carbs in my diet for three weeks, and apart from getting mood swings. I did not see results as such. So, as you can see, the highlighted words here, did not see results. Well, fully three weeks and the phrase did not see results really don't match them together because you're not giving yourself enough time. When it comes to um, your health, fitness, and your well-being, it's, it's, it's a journey rather than a sprint. It's something that you need to, you know, allow your body to accept and, and, you know, follow it through rather than setting a very, very short deadline and then to a conclusion. So as you can see here, firstly, this person reduced carbs. Now, what is from about reducing carbs? It will remain a mystery because it is a perception for many people that to lose weight, you need to reduce carbs, you need to reduce fats. But in fact, it's not the case. 
what you actually need to do is not do this because your three macronutrients, which are your carbs, your fats, your proteins, they all work in balance and you need to keep them in your system. They're not bad things. They're only bad if they're, only, if they're excessive. And then your smart planning comes in. And the byproduct of this are mood swings because your, the carbs in your body are like what petrol is to a car, what kerosene is to an aeroplane. They are your, your main source of energy. So if you're depriving your body of your main source of energy, you will get side effects like mood swings, which of course I'm, which I'm sure all of you appreciate is not a great thing to have. The next quote that I want to look at is, again, this is about comparison that people make with one another. And I'll tell you the key message through this particular quote. So, Fred. so for confidentiality, I have replaced actual name, so I put Fred over here. So Fred and myself started working out together. And he seems to have had a better result than me after five weeks. I must be doing something wrong. So if you have a key word here, I must be doing something wrong. Well, again, if after five weeks, you can't judge that. If you are working out as a group, or if you are working out with a friend, and your friend um, and yourself have been doing the same workout, the same, and, he's, and he or she has had a better result than you uh, quicker, that does not mean that you have done something wrong. One thing that we need to all realize is that all our body types, all of our body structure is different. We're not all the same. Okay, some people react quicker, some people react slower. So typically, where people go wrong is that they don't look look into the long run. So what typically typically can happen over here in this scenario is that yes, even though Fred uh, may have had a better result in the first five weeks, but it'd be that you know the person who's saying this, their results may catch up after five weeks twice as better. But until you don't follow it through. You don't know, and this is where uh, this is where people go wrong, and this is where the downhill spiral begins. So I hope from this slide you can kind of get my general message as to what we shouldn't do. Okay, so now we into the next slide, which is really the outlook. Now this outlook again, this is just being true to yourself, and just just having just having a good general balance of expectations. So let's have a look at these one by one. So the first one, the person says, I understand I may not have time for a workout or much exercise this week, so I will try to maintain a more clean and healthier diet. Now, let's zoom into this keyword here, maintain. So like I said, it is a journey, not a sprint, and maintenance is a key. Now, in this particular instance, this person has recognized that because of their time constraints, their commitment strains, um, or whatever factors are coming up, they are being doing themselves and they might see they might they may say to themselves that actually I will not spend the time that I want to. So how can I compensate for that? Okay? A clean and healthier diet is not a bad option. Because you remember that diet and exercise go hand in hand. So if one does not work out, at least try with the other. But if you maintain a consistency where let's say one week you, you work out uh you know, you work out very well, um and your diet it diet isn't great, right? and the following week you know you won't be able to work out, then at least Use the opportunity to bring in a cleaner and a healthier diet. Now, when we are cleaner and a healthier diet, very briefly, just based on this point, again, no one is asking you to stop things or completely cut out things. The key word here, which we were looking to as well in the nutrition slide, is to reduce. That's the key point. <clears throat> Second quote. So, this one is about, um, again, having your goals and having realistic expectations, and even if you have to give yourself a timeline, what is a realistic timeline? So let's have a look at this particular quote. So this person says, I haven't worked out properly in about a year, and would like to turn and trim, but understand that with correct guidance and dedication, it should take around six months to see my goal. So again, the key words here, understand with correct guidance and dedication. So this person acknowledges that guidance and dedication are two key things for them, which is true. Because obviously, if you are following the right path, if you're getting seeking the right guidance uh, here and there, and importantly, you're dedicated to your goal, so that's a good one. But not only that, if if you compare from the previous slide, the person who who gave themselves weeks, they give themselves a conclusion of five weeks, and this person over here is take, giving themselves six months, there's a big difference. So they're allowing themselves to ease into it. And obviously, when you come with that with that mindset when you haven't worked out for a year and you know that nothing's going to change overnight or straight away and I'm going to enjoy the journey. That is the right way to go about it and most often what happens is that 
you don't actually feel your results, the results come to you, then it hits you that, oh, hang on a second, now, I'm, you know, I didn't realize how much I've improved. It comes to you as a shock because you've allowed yourself to mold into that rather than pressuring yourself. So, so to the third point that we have, um, again, this is somebody who's new, um, probably had very little experience of working out, being, being healthy, uh, but now they want to make a change. So, what does the person with the right mindset say here? So, I understand the importance of exercising and starting out. So, for now, I just want to get used to it before setting specific targets. This is absolutely great. This is the kind of thing we, we want to see. That I just want to get used to it. Because when you start out as trainers, what we advise is that try to get, your, your, get used to your own body weight first. Right, get used to your own functioning, allow your body to explore it, so try, allow it to um, you know, test different range of emotions. Once, we're used to, once we get used to that, then we can narrow it down and set ourselves a specific target. Like, for example, right now I need to cut down, I need to bulk up, what, whatever it may be. But the key message is, allow your physiology to know what's going on, allow your heart and your mind and soul to know what is going on. And try, once, once that happens, the flow becomes very, very natural, and you wouldn't feel a thing. In fact, your journey becomes all the more exciting and enjoyable to do. Okay, so, marry realistic and realistic. Now, let's look at possible solutions that we can come up with. Now, if you notice in the title of the slide, I've written realistic solutions because obviously we are looking, we are looking to keep it real. That's the whole point. We can solutions, but if they're not realistic, then there is really no point. Okay, so as you can see, I've written here, it does not need to be complicated. It is as simple as that. Solutions, if you keep it to the bare minimum, it can be, they can be very, very simple. So now let's look at it from a statistical point of view. So we have 24 hours in a day, and as it is from my understanding, uh, CGI, you guys work from Monday to Friday, about 40 hours, uh, 40 hours a week, typically. Now, to Friday, uh, you do 24 hours into five days, that's about 120 hours in a week. Now, just bear that in mind. Now, listen to my next one. The next point is, is that as trainers, we don't advise for anybody that is, um, unless you're an elite athlete or a competitive builder or anything like that, for the normal public, we don't advise more than three quality one hour sessions. Again, we'll get to what quality means in a minute. But if we do the math, and that is three hours. Right, three hours in a week out of 120 hours. I'm sure you that's not a lot of a lot to ask for. It's less than three percent of your week. Now, if anyone challenges me and says I still do that, that would be to believe because there are so many ways around it. And I hope you get the message in the sense that you don't need to commit hours after hours. Three hours out of 120 hours. I'm sure most of us can squeeze that somewhere somewhere in our routine. We it it is possible. So. If there's three bullet points, quality. Now, I'll put, put it it depends on your goal and structure used. So the key word is goal. So if we know what our goals are, this is where, um, you know, this is the, the basis from where we set everything from. So, you know, if, you, if you're a novice, if you're an intermediate, or if you're an expert, seek the, seek the correct guidance, seek the correct, correct support to, to, allow you, for you, to allow you to have those quality uh, training sessions. Um, so that when, when you go into training sessions, you know exactly what you're going in for, and that will allow you to stay motivated, because that is the key thing. It's all about staying motivated and wanting to do more, more, and more. Um, basic advice that um, I would give all of you um, is in terms of your exercising and to focus, even if you were starting out, is to make sure that you have a mixture of cardio, resistance, and body weight. Now, off the, off the three, uh, body weight, in my opinion, is the pinnacle. Everybody should be able to control their own body weight. I mean, the, the, the thing that I say to my clients, especially those who are quite early on in their um, workout careers, and you know, they they are more into the aesthetics. Which again, there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's nothing wrong with trying to improve improve their aesthetically. But the only but the one question that I do ask a lot of people, and, and it gets them thinking, is that okay? So you want to you want to uh, you know have have cuts. Here and there, but what point in picking up um, heavy weights when you cannot pick up your body weight? What's what's the point in that? If you can't control your own body weight, the point is you know picking up I don't know like a 20 kilogram dumbbell or 15 whatever maybe. What's the point in that? 
So the, the smart and the key uh, way of programming tuning your body is to get used to your own body weight, and that is things like functional exercises. And the beautiful thing about body weight exercises is that you really don't need to do anything apart from yourself. You can do absolutely anywhere, any any space, anytime, anywhere. Um, you know, there's so many different things you can do just using your own body. So the bot, the underlying message uh, which sums it up is in the last bullet point, which which setting body to understand. It is always, always about that because every decade of your, of your life, your body will have different requirements. Um, so if you can keep up with that and allow your body to understand, your 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 health, fitness, and well-being journey will be flawless and will not feel a thing. Okay. I hope that helps. Um, moving on to the next slide. So coming into nutritional advice. Now again, just to re enforce everybody, um, exercise and nutrition go hand in hand. So there really is no room to neglect one over the other. Okay, it's very useful to keep both balanced out. Now as you can see, I've written at the top. It is important to have a good balance, but to space out meals appropriately. Now let me talk a little bit more about this. Typically, um, most of us, we have three meals in a day. So we'll have a breakfast we'll have, and we will have dinner. Now, for the time being, I'm just going to take dinner out of the equation and I'm going to zoom in into breakfast and lunch because I think this is what will apply to all of you, um, you know, very clearly and it will get you to understand where I'm coming from as a, as a, as a fitness, profe fitness professional. So with the breakfast, firstly, there is no compromise with breakfast. Okay, that's the truth. That, that's what's going to get you um, off to a great start for your day. Now, with breakfast, typically, um, what we advise is consumption of, of carbohydrates, um, which is obviously you can see in the um, scenario bits on the slide in the pre-workout. Uh, consume carbs complex. Obviously, we'll come to that in a minute. But what? Is, but let's just spend a bit of time just talking about what complex carbs are. In a nutshell, they're basically food um, that release energy slowly. Um, so typical examples would be things like um, uh, nuts. There would be things like uh, porridge, uh, cereals, but not every type of cereal. And we'll come, in, we'll look at that in a minute as well. The good thing about complex carb carbs as well is that they they prevent unnecessary hunger as well. What we typically go wrong in our breakfast is we consume things which are high in sugar and salt content, and in our show we call them simple sugars. Now, what simple sugars do? They're, they're great in giving you energy for about an hour, hour and a half, two hours at most. But they will do, they will take away that energy as quickly as they gave it to you. And that is where the, you know, the thing of maybe uh, feeling hungry or thirsty comes in. Um, and not that, but if we look at it from a biological perspective, they also, have, they also play with our insulin levels as well. Because when we get that um, shot of energy through that particular cereal, it, it spikes our insulin levels up, but then our energy levels start dipping down. They take it down as quickly as they brought it up. And that is what eventually, down the line, as, as we age, leads to factors like diabetes. That is where diabetes, blood pressure, things, these are all the trigger points that bring it along as, as, as we progress in our lives. Um, so that's the um, breakfast bar. Obviously, we can do a whole seminar on this. Uh, but obviously, I'm trying to keep everything as simple as possible. Now, in terms of um, lunches and snacking in the office, the best advice that I can give you uh, for this is even if you bring even if you bring lunch to the office, or if you want those people to have, have lunches outside um, every day, okay, fair enough. But what is the smart way of going about doing it? Uh, so go, go, smart way of going about doing it and being kind to your body. Well, what I advise is to space it out. So if you have bought a a packed lunch, for example, rather than consuming all at one go at, you know, 12.30 or 1 o'clock, so that maybe have a little bit when you have your first or your second cup of coffee, maybe at around 11 o'clock, and the rest um, at your proper lunchtime. The reason for that is, is because it allows the body to keep in check and process the food smoothly. It, it, it doesn't put a whole burden on it at one go. Um, I mean, I'm not saying it's it's the um, it's you know you all must do this. But what I'm trying to say is that this is a useful, uh, advisable w way of consuming uh, your meals 
when you work environment. It just makes things a lot easier for your body and a lot easier for yourself. Okay? But the underlying message is, as you can see, be kind to our bodies. So now I'm going to go into a scenario. Um, so this is a typical workout scenario. It could be at a gym or it could be, you know, if you, if you exercise at home. Um, you can relate, you, you know, this, this can relate to that. And again, this is just some advice uh, from myself. Um, so again, it's not uh, an instruction, but it's, it's advice which I think is useful to take on board and act accordingly. So I've, bought, I've divided this up into three parts. So pre-workout, during workout, and post-workout. Okay, so let's have a look at these three individually. So pre-workout consume uh, carbohydrates, releases energy more slowly, allow to avoid uh, being hungry unnecessarily. Now, typically, with pre-workouts, I would say it's best to get something in the system uh, about one hour to one and a half hours before you actually know you're going to be hitting it, you know, you're going to be starting. It just allows the body to process the food and release appropriately, okay? Because if you leave it too short, it can lead to things like bloating and cramping and feeling pukish, which can obviously intervene in your workouts. I'm sure once you commit to a workout, you want to make sure it's, it's, it's a quality workout. That's what we're looking for, quality. Um, <clears throat> doing a workout, uh, water is very, very um, important, and I put here water in small measures, and that is a very important, important thing as well. Um, in my observation, um, in my experience, I've seen people, you know, who work out, they're in classes, and they make it a point to maybe sit, uh, you know, take big gulps of water after every five, ten minutes. Um, and that is not actually a good idea because, uh, biologically, that can lead to cramps. Um, in, in most cases, it can lead to cramps. So the message is, take water, but take it in small, small sips, okay? Because allow allow the body to absorb it. Now, the post-workout one, now, this is something which I, I want you, all of you to really, really pay attention because this is a very important thing that unless people get hold of that, they don't actually know about this. So what actually happens is that once you've completed your workout, your body actually opens a window for 45 minutes. And the window opens, basically what it's telling, what it's telling you is that, listen, this is the time for you to get all the good stuff in. So this is, I'm giving you 45 minutes to get the good carbs, the good fat, the good protein, in, okay, you get it in now, I, I will be able to process that much quicker than you would than I would be if you now I'm not saying that after 45 minutes it will shut off and say, no, nah, you didn't do it, so I'm not gonna do it. It will still do it, but not to that same extent. But I hope you can see the underlying message behind this as well. That why working out regularly is a good thing because it is after a workout that this window opens because your body is is, is in that momentum. Your body is basically, you know, after 45 minutes to one hour workout, it's in that process, like, I mean, that it's, it's enjoying what it's doing. So it's saying, okay, you know, you've been kind to me, I want to be kind to you, Here, here's your opportunity. So really make good use of that time, if you can. And the point on this slide, bad habit, reduce consumption, and never just stop. So as I mentioned earlier, um, it's a very common thing, it's a very typical thing, people to say, um, I'm going to be good, I'm going to cut out chocolate. I'm not. Going, I'm going to cut out carbohydrates. I'm going to cut out fat. I'm going to stop this for, you know, some so weeks, so and so days. What I say is, don't. Know. That's a very bad thing to do. In fact, that that is what will make your body go to rejection mode. Because then, because it's something and you stopped all of a sudden, what it will do, it will just say, well, I'm used to it. You stopped it. I'm going to be, you know, I'm I'm going to use all whatever whatever fats, proteins, carbs I have inside me. I'm going to use that. And when that and what typically happens through that is we, we can typically gain weight, we can typically, typically feel dehydrated consistently, we can feel stomach, a lot of side effects. So my advice would be is that if you really want to give something up, keep consuming it, keep consuming those, those I don't know, glasses of red wine or white wine, whatever it may be, but don't just stop it, keep consuming them, but just say to yourself, okay, next week I will reduce it by one unit or by one glass. And two or three weeks down the line, I'll reduce it by two. Just uh, just be smart about it, okay? Don't let your body catch it because trust me, your body is a very smart thing. And it's the same thing with workouts. Uh, when we design workouts, we design we design it according to the fact that your body is a very smart machine. It really it understands what's going on. And if you give it a, if you give it a challenge, it will ask you. So that's something to really really bear in mind. Okay, right. So moving on to the next slide. Now this 
is um, pinnacle of everything, not just um, health and fitness and exercise, but everything, anything. So hopefully, I'm going to explain this through a health and fitness perspective, but by all means, take what I say and you can apply it to, you know, any of your life, um, should you wish to. So, look at these four points. So the first point I've made is, is a key factor of motivation sets the tone, of course. If you if you are if you have a negative mindset that will show in your body, um, that will show in your motivation, and that will just show you, that will just show you, you know, in a in a person. If, if there's no escaping about that, and I will come back to this point. Um, and if you're a positive person, um, that will through as well. And not only that, but that will motivate you to do a lot of things, not just exercising, but everything. You know, you'll be peaceful and relaxing your mind, and obviously if you relax in your mind, then you can actually focus. Um, second point I've written here, first place where all fitness starts, of course, um, you know, he um, health, health conditions, um, and stress and mindset, keeping your your mind in check, but the, the, all these things want to work together, and you need to allow for that to happen. So before, before starting out on a fitness journey, it is it's worth saying to yourself that not only are you going to set change yourself physically, but you're also going to change yourself mentally as well. Um, and on the third bullet point, uh, feel positive in ourselves to feel good overall. Obviously, uh, I'm sure many, if not all of you, will agree that a lot of uh, the main reason why we do exercise is to feel good about ourselves, but for some of us as well, is to use a stress buster and allow. Uh, your stress to be put out into the gym floor, which is which is a good way to approach it. Now, that I want you guys to sort of zoom into. Now, you're probably thinking, what does it mean by cockpit of the plane versus our brain? Now, here's my perception. So, uh, airplane, okay? A big machine, a big heavy machine, okay? Um, from from its uh, takeoff to its in flight, all the way down to its landing. What is the thing? What is that? What is that thing controlling the plane? It is. It is a cockpit, isn't it? It's the cockpit of that plane. A small area in the plane with all the instruments, with all the, uh, the you know the throttles, the switches. That is controlling the plane. So whatever happens in the cockpit will have an effect on what happens on the plane. Right now, if we translate translate this into ourselves and we look at ourselves as an aeroplane, where is our cockpit? Our cockpit, our brain. All right, that's where our switches, that is where our ignitions are, that is where our throttle is. So if we can't, if we, if we can't um, control that properly, how are we going to control the rest of our bodies? Because whatever happens in your brain, whatever uh, wirings are going on in your brains, that will spill out into the rest of your body. So it's very important for us to go back into our minds and retune whatever negativity we have in order for us to have an overall impact as one body. Now, here's some of um, my I'm going to talk to you about, and this is actually, if I'm being honest with you, this is actually um, a self-tried and tested way, and plus it worked for me, and I'm positive this can work for all of you as well. So, one of the things that I've um, realized is self-talk and use of positive phrases, simple as that, can make a huge difference to our everyday lives. And not only that, but but also the way we perceive us, our, ourselves um, in, in our daily life and when we are trying to embark on a health and fitness journey. Simple phrases like, I am, I will, I can. Once we keep talking about it over and over again, when we keep saying this to us over and over again, your body starts to accept, accept whatever we're saying, and then that spills over to your actions. So let's put this into a context that you can see here, um, and then I'll explain a bit of this quote. So, saying something like, I will enjoy my health and well-being journey, and I'm positive, I will see a good result. The key thing is I've decided to make this as part of my lifestyle, and this will help me perform better in life and work. Now, if you notice, in such a short paragraph, how many key, how many key positive uh, lines are there? You know, the person saying, I will enjoy, I am positive, I have decided, this will help me. So, if you say something like this to yourself, get out. You know, if you're feeling stressed, just say to yourself, actually, I'm not stressed, I'm relaxed. You know, um, if there's an obstacle in the way, uh, for example, you're going to the gym and you get overtaken, you know, you get overwhelmed by so many people there, and you're thinking to yourself, you know, this person's probably thinking, I'm so overweight, you know, I, what am I doing over here? Well, the message is, first of all, people don't actually judge anybody. You know, they're 
for your workout, they're there for their workout. They've got, they're just focused on their goals, and you're focused on your goals. So in the like that, when you're in obstacles such as that, just say to yourself, I'm lax, I'm here for a workout, I'm going to enjoy myself, and, and just go. It may, may seem, you know, you, some of you may be thinking, well, it's easier said than done, True. but give it a go, and I assure you, it works. Because this is something that I've trained some of my own clients to think of as well. And I've feedback as well um, from them saying that, you know, it's, it's helped them not only in their exercise and life, but in their day and life as well. So I hope this um, slide has helped. Cool. Right. So if you move on to the uh, next slide. So media. All social media. Right. So as I'm sure all can acknowledge that there is bundles and bundles of information on social media, and it's not going to stop. And great, and okay, fantastic. Um, but is it fantastic? Well, again, I'm not here to gun down social media. I'm not here to, here to gun down YouTube or anything like that. Again, I'm going to share my opinions. Um, let's have a look. Let's start off with the pros, and then we'll look at the cons. So, firstly, what's the good about social media? Everywhere at your fingertips. Of course, if you know whatever workout you want to do, whatever part of the body you want to uh, target. Go to YouTube, go to Google, type it in, and you get hundreds and hundreds of videos to show you what you can do. Uh, second point, easily available. Of course, it's day and age, and especially um, you know all of you guys in this corporate world, if you don't, if you you know you will have phones, iPads, laptops, any sort of device, yeah, you will have that. Um, if you have that, then obviously again, getting on social media is not an issue. Um, there's always something new to see and try. With the saturation of the, the personal training and fitness training uh, market, um, what these trainers are doing now, they're, they're bringing in their, their own product. They're showing people that, hey, try this new workout out. You know, this, this will get you results in, you know, two weeks or six days or whatever it may be. Now, again, I'm, I'm not, um, you know, gunning down these people either, but what I want to say is that regardless of what they're showing, ultimately it's working that same muscle. That's what's matters. Is it's bringing back down to that basic thing, um, you know, that we are looking for. But people are, are just showing fancier way of doing the same thing. Okay, so that's um, the the pro of social media. Now let's have a look at the cons. Um, too much information confusion. Again, that's a no-brainer. With so much information on there, more than not, what I've noticed in my experience and talking to people in the gym floor is they're working out, but they're not sure, and obviously ties into the next point, that it was right for them. Um, so I, so my question is, okay, if you're not sure, then why are you doing it? So I typically guess, because, oh, this has 300,000 followers on Instagram, that's why. So I'm like, well, that's the reason, really, um, because it may work for them, but do you, is that right for you? And you know, the typical response I get what is that no, but something new to try. Okay, fair enough, fair. Enough. But then this is what ties into the next question, to the next point. And as you can see, I've highlighted this. That point, it cannot see you. As, as great as it is, it cannot physically see you. And as I said to right at the start, that us are different. We all have differing needs. This is where we need expertise. This is where you need the right guidance. This is where you need someone who can look at you and say, you know what, this is what you need to do. This is what you don't need to do. And uh, this is right for you, and this is wrong for you. Okay, let me take you through the uh, let me take you through this journey. So so much so that it it relates to you. It doesn't waste your time, and, and most importantly, it gets you the result that you want. Because where we go wrong is we does with all these great things on social media, um, in the news, or wherever it may be, and you might think great, fantastic. You know, I can I'll do this, and I'm sure because this person is getting results, I'm going to get it as well. But the fact of the matter is, it may or may not, we don't know. But it's very, it's very, um, it's very cloudy. It's very, very cloudy. Okay. So, next slide. So, some of you, all of you can try um, in your office environment. So, I've just uh, brought up four different points, which you can try. Again, they're very simple. For some of you, it may be reinforcement. For some of you, it may be new. Let's have a so the first thing I've written is have the right things on the desk. Now this can be a very, very simple thing. Um, you know, the first thing that comes into my mind, 
And this is something that I used to do when I used to be in the corporate world is have some basic as two pieces of fruit on my desk and just consume that any time in the day. But the key thing is, is that I know that for every day that I was at work, I had two pieces of good food on my desk that I consumed. And that's the habit that we need to get into. You know, I'm not asking you to um, bring in healthy meals and for that to take up your keyboard. What I'm asking you to do is just keep it very really simple, um, but just make sure it's there. Um, the right things in your desk. Even have like a little palm, palm, palm full of um, nuts. Give you don't have any nut allergies. If you, if you don't, then have, have, have those in your desk. Just basically have something good on your desk. Um, second point, uh, water bottles. Now, it's compulsory. Because to be, it is compulsory. Um, there's no excuse for not having water. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, and I know a lot of people say, well, I don't like water. Well, yes, even it's not the most uh, tastiest of beverages out there, but it, it is very useful. Um, you know, there are ounces and ounces of benefits of water, which again we can look at some of the time uh, if there is uh, why water is so good. But get a habit to have, to have at least that on the desk. Again, don't measure it even even you know whatever size bottle you have have. But the thing is, get water in in you consistently. Okay. Third point uh, that I've brought here. This is something that I used to do <laughs> in, in my desk from my couple days. And I used to get funny looks for these as well. It's straight every now and then, especially upper back area. Simple name. Now, thing that I've noticed um, in my as a fitness professional is whenever I come across people in the corporate, they have common uh, flaws. You know, people complain about the upper shoulder, the lower back, uh, postural problems. So the key thing I would address here is. You know, take five, ten minutes, or even two minutes, or one minute, just to do basic stretches. I mean, a, a good stretch that you can do if you're sitting in your in your, on your chair, and would help your upper back is just to st stretch your back out and get your get, get your you know get yourself looking up to the ceiling. Because what one thing to remember is that your head um, is is a heavy piece of your body part. So wherever your wherever your head goes, your body will follow. So if you take your head all the way back on the back of your back of your chair, what you'll notice is that this will Extend your spine as well. Okay, and extend your spine, hyper extend your spine, and hold about 30 seconds. It will bring a sense of relief. Uh, and obviously, the more and more you do it, um, I'm not saying this is a miracle cure or anything, but what I'm trying to say, it will help. Uh, and if you have the facilities, if you have the space, or if you're allowed, keep a little resistance band on your desk and do basic stretch, stretch exercises. Um, you know, from one minute to however long you can do. Um, obviously, don't um, bombard your desk with different small pieces of exercise and kit. I would not advise that. Um, and the last point, brisk walk. Now, one thing that um, all of us should do, regardless of who we are, is to get our, our heart rate above our normal um, normal rate that we have. So basically, what I mean to say here, and in the office context as well with brisk walking, is let's say for example if you could get up get up from your desk and you want to go to the kitchen to make a cup of coffee, um, walk a bit than they normally would. Um, or and, and likewise when you come back from the kitchen to your office, obviously I'm not saying walk walk really really quickly, but walk a little bit quicker than you normally would because what we're trying to do over here is just just to surprise the heart. Okay. Once you're sitting in your desk, once you are um, sedented to a particular position, you're just going about its business. You know, there's a surprise, there's no shock for it. And what we're trying to do when we're looking at health and fitness is we're always trying to shock our body one way or the other. We're trying to take it out, take it outside the comfort zone. So a very small thing like this, um, trust me, can take part. And especially if you're in an office five days a week, um, something like this. You know, if you if you know you're going to get up to go from one desk to your colleague's desk or anything like that, walk, just give part a little bit, a bit of a challenge. Okay, so moving on to the next slide. Um, so these are my top five tips um, that you know sum up um, our um, conversation. Um, and this is something that I would all, I would like all of you to uh, bear in mind. And please, um, as we are in January of this year, we're great. You can follow this through these these five tips. So firstly, a no-brainer: avoid shortcuts. Um, treat your health and well-being as a journey where each decade of your life has a different differing need, needs. 
it, it is as simple as that. There, there really is no point in going for shortcuts. Again, I appreciate um, you know all of you are you know con you have time constraints um, and other constraints. Obviously, we in this that we are in the fast life that we're in, we all have things that that prevents us. But there really is no point in having shortcuts because shortcuts um, more often than not have negative implications. If I'm if I'm being honest with you, and that can lead to more problems. And obviously, that that is not the point. That really isn't the point. Okay, just um, avoid that. Second one is. Don't be conscious. Um, do not feel conscious at all. It's it, it's a it's a it's a mind game. And as I gave you that example of of the gym, it's a very very common thing. Um, especially I'm training people and I'm there with them. People you know, that my client, I've, I've had clients say to me that, oh, I bet that person over there thinks I'm an overweight piece of so and so, or you know, I'm looking really, really silly, aren't I? And <laughs> And the one I say over and over again is, I guarantee you, no one cares. They don't. And that is, they don't. So if you get that into your mind, that that no one no one's looking at each other, everyone's there with their own gains, then this can help you. And this can help you become more confident in taking a step as well. Point. Be true to yourself, psychologically and physically. So again, psychologically, again, this comes this with what talks about stress and mindset and physically you know be true to what your body type is who you are okay where you are this at this moment in time tie the two things together okay tie the two things together realistically be true to yourself and your journey will be worthwhile Four point clean diet big part be kind to your body it is as simple as that as i said to you um, earlier Exercising and diet go hand in hand. Do not compromise. Do not play around with diet. Okay, and at, and at the very least, keep your diet very, very basic, very simple. Your body does not require big, big changes. It all it asks, all it asks for is just give me simple, simple things. Just if you be if you be nice and gentle to me, I'll be nice and gentle to you. Okay, win-win situation for both. Lastly, but not least, seek advice to keep you in check. Um, and again, um, you know I'm. I'm here with you guys. Uh, I'm here with CGI, and if you have any sort of question or concern, by all means, I mean, whenever you want, however you want, I've got, I've got time for all of you guys. So, on that note, I would like to um, thank everybody uh, for joining me in this webinar, and I will pass back over to Anne. Okay, so much, Ali. So, if you have questions, please can you submit them now? And we'll try to answer as many as we can in the time that's left. If not, um, Ali will uh, come back to you personally. Um, but I, before I hand back to Ali, I just wanted to mention a couple of the opportunities that uh, CJ actually offers us to, to exercise. Um, now we're all fired up and motivated. First of all, I've been asked to talk about the UK Challenge, which is an intelligent event. Um, it's all about enjoyment and personal challenge. It's not about breaking records. Um, but it is actually designed for sedentary office workers and definitely a team building exercise using a variety of physical and mental skills. So it says here it's a combination of running, cycling, canoeing, swimming, but also strategy, puzzle solving, construction. Um, Pre-participants have found it a hugely worthwhile experience and we are very keen for those people who have never taken part to get involved. So if you're at all interested, please uh, email the address there. It's the 5th to 8th of July in the Brecon Beacons. And we are looking to put forward 10 teams from CGI. Um, and you've then got an opportunity to uh, compete with teams from lots of other companies. But what are in CGI? Well, I don't need Leatherhead, so I had a look down the list. And here you can join in five or seven. football, badminton, tennis, squash, orienteering, basketball, yoga, pilates, massage. We're about to start high intensity training gym classes, thanks to our year. And all of these are subsidized by the sports and social clubs, so a very, very reasonable cost. And that's your other head. What about your local site? I know there's a huge list at, at Reading, I know Bristol, Bridget. There are lots of activities available. So 
if you are looking for motivation, if you want to work with other people, then please consider what, what's there. Or if it's not there, if you've got an interest, why don't you set it up? Talk to your sports and social club, talk to Oxygen, see what we can do to help. And just a quick advance notice. Oxygen are running the Park Run Challenge again for the fifth consecutive year. This has been incredibly popular. And it will start again on the 7th of April and will run for three months. Um, but you can start now. If you haven't uh, run any, any park runs, why not do the Coach to 5K program or sign up for park run and, and start doing it. The tailor is now called a tail walker, so you can walk it and then gradually build up, build up your PVs. So lots of opportunities there. Thank you very much. Back to questions. So, Thank um, you. And we've had some really good questions coming through. So um, I'll start with some on exercise and recovery. So someone's up here. Um, any advice on how to recover more quickly from delayed onset muscle soreness? Started attending a boot camp and it's taken about three to four days for my legs and arms to recover. Okay. Um, so, yeah, as we call it. Um, the best thing I would say, I mean, normally DOMS, as it normally comes from when there is soreness and um, tightness in particular muscles. So now the, the question uh, for me would be where and what part of the body are you feeling it? Because normally what happens is uh, when you do an, an exercise um, and the following day or you know or after 40 hours when you feel the effects of um, delayed onset of muscle soreness, we need to see what area of the body it is hurting the most. And then according to that, typically what we recommend is to do things like foam roll out or to stretch it out. That's the best thing you can do uh, because basically what your body is, is telling directly is that, hey, I'm actually quite tight here. You need to work on me. I mean, you worked me out. Great. But do you realize I, 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 need, a bit, I need a bit more tension uh, from you? And that attention is, is to stretch that area out, allow it to become supple. Otherwise, if you don't, then... Um, it will repeatedly come unless you take some action. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, there's another one here. So how do you stay motivated during periods of injury? Right. Um, during periods of injury, it, it can be uh, tricky, but again, we need to identify uh, what injury it is. But what I would typically say is stay motivation. Uh, again, it's, it's, that, it's that mindset thing that, that based on how severe your injury is, uh, what we need to look at is what we do in that period of uh, during that period of injury itself. Can we at least make another change? Can we at least okay? Can we make a, a diet change um, of some sort, which we be kind to our bodies? I mean, what parts of our bodies are still able to function, uh, which we which we can work on, but not over excessively? Uh, and how can we train in such a way that once our injury finishes? Um, you know what we can do for that. So we can we can actually sort of take a take a step back, not just think to ourselves that just because we're injured we are you know we can't do anything. Again, depending on how severe injury is, there's always room to do something. Uh, there's always room to uh, compensate for something, and just allow for that injury to first settle down. But in that time, focus on other parts, and when that injury comes to you know it, it seizes down, then we can work on that, and that typically is things like rehab, if that's what the case is. Thank you. Another one exercise. So is there a more beneficial time to train when choosing between early morning versus evening? So, um, to be honest, really isn't. I do get quite asked this question a lot, but if you were to ask me, I would say uh, early morning is more beneficial. I wouldn't say it's the best one, but due to the, the way um, the days roll, uh, your day will typically roll out, it's best to um, work out in, in, in the morning. Now, I'm not saying f uh, for all the, all, the, all of the guys that work out after, after, their, um, after their work, it's a bad thing. Um, you know, it's still great. A workout is a workout. It doesn't, it doesn't matter when you do it and how you do it. But it's just as basically, it just allows the body to recover during the day, I mean, to, to work with you during the day, and to and if there's any flaws that come out, it will it will show you during that day. 
Um, so again, it's, there's no concrete answer as such. Uh, the key thing should be that if you are a person who likes to work out in the evening, you know, be true to that and, and stick to that. And if you're one of those people that know that, you know, work, uh, morning workouts is a, it's a thing for you, then stick to that as well. Just don't play around with the psychology of your body because, again, your body will tell you what is good for you. You just need to listen to it and adapt to that accordingly. I suppose workouts, life is less likely to get in the way. Exactly. Exactly, and, and exactly, and, that, and that's why I recommend. Again, see, notice I would recommend to do it in the morning. Um, and again, I'm saying recommend. So if people do it in the evening, don't, don't get offended. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've had some questions here about extra reading. So, um, do you have any recommended books just on for more information on any of the topics that you've covered, um, or any books on um, how to change your mindset and when it comes to mm -hmm. yeah, there is a lot of useful um there's a lot of useful reading out there on exercise and mindset but one of the one of the the more recent reading that I've personally done done and found interest now this is something to bear in mind that um I'm one of the people that if something does not interest me I search for really quickly but this particular uh speaker um he delay um on stress and mindset, and it gave me a motivation as well. The name of the speaker is uh, David uh, Goggins, so that's G O G G I N. He was a former uh, U.S. Navy SEAL. Um, I would recommend have a look at, looking at his uh, video. It's about um, basically he's, it's a 45 minute that talks about how we can overcome obstacles. And now through that talk, not only did he talk about overcoming stress, but it's, it's it's such a good uh, video that you can really apply it to just yourself. And and like I said to you, like I spoke about in my in my, um, in my um, webinar as well, that um, if if we if we change our mindset, we are helping ourselves um, to focus our goals. Um, and especially when it comes to health and exercise, I think this particular video will will help because it will just open your mind up to the way you deal with, with obstacles. So. Dave Goggins, a U.S. Navy SEAL, um, have a look at that online. A good video to look at. I think we have time for just one more. Um, so one on diet made. Is it true that breakfast should be the heaviest meal of the day and dinner the lightest? No, I'll be honest with you. Uh, no meal should be the heaviest or the lightest. Um, it's all about proportion. It's all about spacing out. Um, the only thing I would say about breakfast is that breakfast should be one of your most quality meals of your day. Um, that's what it should be. That's where, because that is where you're starting your day. So what better way of setting your day than to get quality stuff in you? Okay. Um, so it should be heavy in the in the sense of getting the right nutrition in, not in the, and it shouldn't be heavy in terms of portion. Okay, because um, you want to get good things in your bo in your body that will last you for at least three or four hours, you know, until lunch. That that should be a challenge when it comes to breakfast. That you want to have something in your system that will not make you feel bloated, but will actually carry you through till lunchtime without you having to consume anything in between. Um, and in terms of dinner, um, with dinner again, now dinner is one of those things where typically people want to enjoy a meal or you know they want to enjoy a family meal or go out. Um, so the only thing I say about dinner is. Is not enjoy dinner, but the key thing with dinner is about is about the timing. Um, it doesn't matter when you have your dinner, but do not eat dinner too late because if you leave your dinner very very close to bedtime, let's say, then it doesn't give your body enough time to process it while you're still awake, and and that's what and, and it wants to do that as well. And obviously, um, I'm sure most of you can appreciate that when you go to bed with you know just having dinner as well, it can be a bit uncomfortable as well, which can come away of your sleep. So yeah, definitely try having dinner maybe about three or three hours before three or four hours before you actually go to bed. Just just be um kind to yourself that way. Thank you, Ali. I think we've run out of time now. So um apologies yeah. if we didn't get to your questions. Um I will collate them and send them over to Ali and send the responses back to you. Um just a reminder to that a copy of these slides and a recording of this session will be available on our Know How workspace. You can find the go to links here. Um, also, if you could get a minute to fill out our survey, that would be great. Um, unless, Anne, you have any final comments? 
just a thank you, Charlie, and I hope you're all inspired. And let's uh, let's hope we are not amongst the uh, many people who do give up their resolutions, but do actually make some progress. I hope this is giving you a lot of uh, food for thought. So thank you very much indeed, and have a good day, everybody.